managerial capitalism. In The Visible Hand, Alfred Chandler discusses the transition from proprietary to managerial capitalism. 50 between the 1840s and 1920s. The economy of the United States transformed from agrarian and rural to industrial and urban. Modern multi-unit business enterprises replaced small, traditional, sole proprietary businesses. Controlling more resources enabled the new industrialists to increase productivity and lower costs. These industry consolidations resulted in greater market control by large, vertically integrated corporations. Big business arrived in the United States, seizing control of resources including raw materials, production technology, labor, and ultimately the government. A managerial capitalism artifact is oligopolistic price fixing, which results in market inefficiencies. Organized groups are the principal beneficiaries of managerial capitalism. 51 Governmental assistance varies proportionately by the resources each group controls. Under managerial capitalism, the government's primarily role is to support these groups as an act of self preservation. Satisfying large corporations helps the government to retain the existing structure and size, for example, funding from tax revenues. Atomized societal members find their roles reduced. Marginalized groups controlling fewer resources receive far fewer benefits than people belonging to powerful and well-organized groups. The U.S. Congress's approval of the 2003 tax bill created $350 billion savings for taxpayers. This legislation passed despite less than one-third of the public feeling these tax cuts were the best way to increase economic growth and increase jobs. 52 One estimate found only 22% of taxpayers with incomes less than $100,000 would benefit by President Bush's 15% maximum dividend tax rate. 53 Who benefits the most by low dividend tax rate? Clearly. Big business owners gain the most from such policies. A pluralist society enables organized groups to exert too much influence on government trade policies. Capital's growing interests eventually control the activities of government, even at the expense of the long-term interests of society. 54 Big Capital's development into transnational corporation threatens the existence of the nation-state as well as labor unions and small capital. Following this line of thinking, growth trends in large corporations come at the expense of higher unemployment and a decline in small businesses. Despite the apparent shortcomings of managerial capitalism, this form best represents the dominant state of U.S. capitalism. 45 Managerial capitalism also has proponents, for example, Austrian economist Joseph Schumpeter argued that a production system dominated by big businesses is superior to one with only small businesses. 56 Government regulation should not be based on the principle that big business must operate under a system of perfect competition. While Schumpeter's mention of government regulation seems to suggest the need for some big business limitations, he encourages market development beneficial to big capital. Another argument is big business represents the lesser of two evils. 57 Capitalism stands with federalism, the separation of powers, and the antitrust tradition in the deep suspicion of authority.